Hey, what's going on, beer tubers? It's Erica, as always. Well, not really. Um, more or less than lately, a solo beer review. And today we're looking at something that I guess is pretty perplexing, or pretty cool, actually. Um, Stone has thrown their hat in the ring with the unfiltered IPA craze for days, or haze for days. Uh, Treehouse-esque, New England-esque, Trillium, hoof-hearted, or hoof-hearted, um, even Toppling does some hazy things uh, where they don't filter their beer. Um, and I guess uh, Stone is making this an iteration of the Enjoy By series. So 21416, share this one with your loved ones. Uh, this one is just hit Minnesota literally today, bottled on 110 of 16, so 11 days old at the time of this recording. 9.4% alcohol by volume. 90 IBUs. That's an F ton. So it'll be interesting to see what a, a West Coast beer is like um, with some of those unfiltered notes, if you will. A lot of those hops don't fall out of suspension. They kind of, when they dry hop this beer or any of these IPAs, a lot of those hops tend to go through a biotransformation, so to speak, with yeast particles still in suspension during primary fermentation. With a lot of these hops, there's a ton of um, myrcene or different oils, this is getting a little geeky, um, that increase this juiciness of aromatics depending on how the water is treated, but this is a West Coast take on it, and I have to just note this because I don't know off the top of my head, this beer uses a fuck ton of hops, Nugget, Super Galena, Simcoe, Delta, Target, Amarillo, Cascade, Galaxy, Citra, Nelson Sauvin, Matueka, and Helga. Two of those I've never heard of or never even used. So anyways, this one pours out pretty, yeah, pretty haze for days. Uh, opaque, um, bright, bright, screaming orange. Reminds me of a, a, a New England IPA for that matter. Um, 90 IBU scares me a little bit. 9.4% alcohol scares me a little bit. Let's dive in a little closer to the nose. Oh, wow. Yeah, really, really nice... Uh, Subtle juiciness character. Kind of reminds me of like a, a older Toppling Goliath beer that's kind of just been hanging around for a few days. Um, yeah, big ass mango notes, some ripe pineapple, overripe pineapple. A little bit of fleshy peach notes, apricot. A uh, little bit of ruby red grapefruit flesh. Definitely a slightly citric peel, if you will. Um, kind of privy to those West Coast beers. Definitely the Enjoy by series. A little bit of dankness, too. It doesn't smell like pine needles, though, or pine, for that matter. And that's the one thing I hate so much about West Coast IPAs is they, they ride the pine. See what I did there? Uh, like a lot of my Packers are doing the rest of the season. Fuck. Uh, anyways, um, this one is really, really heavy on that juicy front. It's a little bit of that bubblegummy note, too. It's quite unique. Um, I don't get a like a resounding bitterness in the nose. I don't get a resounding like pininess. I just get tropical notes, a little bit of citric peel, and some dankness. And it smells honestly pretty awesome. And it looks pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and dive in to the taste of the Stone Enjoy by February 14, 2016 Unfiltered Edition. Cheers. Yeah. Wow. Um, this one's been sitting out uh, for a few minutes pre-filming uh, and recording, so I don't know. Just above, just below room temp, just above a warmer fridge temp, if you will. That's nice. Um, kind of reminds me of Hetty Topper, to be entirely honest with you. Um, it's definitely got those West Coast um, like foundational notes. Uh, it's quite dry and quite bitter, to be honest with you. I would say it doesn't really taste like 90 IBUs. Um, initially, I'm getting like a lot of this like uh, bubblegummy, juicy, fruity notes that I like to get in my IPAs. Bitterness is balanced. Um, I wouldn't, like I said, it doesn't taste like 90 IBUs. The only thing is, is it does sit on the right, the back of the center of the, the tongue there. But really, this is delicious. Yeah, really reminds me of a fresh heady topper or even a little bit older, a couple days old heady topper. 
Um, I'm getting a lot of this like pithy fruit notes like apricot, um, peach, nectarine, just kind of those fleshy radar on the pith. Um, wow. Honestly, pretty impressed. And then it kind of kind of toys with you and it, it, it's like a little bit of mango and a little bit of like pineapple notes and then a little bit of grapefruit peel and then some bitter citric peel and um, nice maltiness coming through to balance out some of all that like tropical heavy juice notes. I would not normally say that about a 9.4% alcohol by volume beer. So this is a West Coast take on hazy, haze for days beers. And uh, I, I, I kind of think they nailed it. Joe, Joe's Arcade, if you guys watch any of my other videos, I do reference Joe's channel a lot. He does send me a lot of great beers. Um, and I think he's going to really like this beer. Uh, he's privy to those West Coast malts because he lives there and he does support the movement. But he is a New England homer. He loves those Patriots. I put the kiss of death on them this weekend by rooting for them. So hopefully they lose. Anyways, uh, really guys, this has been quite a treat. This gets a 96 on Beer Advocate. And for me, um, wow, I'm really, really, really close to that. And I don't give high regards to West Coast IPAs. You already all know that. I think it's great. Uh, I'm going to go a 93 out of 100. I think it just slightly misses the mark in the fact that it's touch sweet, touch bitter, and uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, the most important factor, fuck me. Just leaving things out, guys. Mouthfeel, god damn it. Mouthfeel's like, cut, the smoothness of the mouthfeel is cut down by the bitterness. And it actually uh, is like a, it's not light bodied and it's not so dry that your tongue is buckling, but um, holy hops, Batman, as this is getting a little warmer throughout a seven minute review, sorry about that. Um, the mouthfeel just kind of subsides into this not so creamy, um, sprucingly like bitter, I don't know. Um, light to medium mouthfeel, still not one of my um, favorite things. So yeah, 93 is going to stick for me, guys. Still, I think this is a world-class example. If you live on the West Coast, definitely drink the shit out of this so Stone keeps brewing it. They should brew all of them like this. And if you're anywhere else in the United States, go ahead and try it. It's not $18, $19, $20 uh, six-pack like a lot of these Midwest stores run. Um, I got this one for $12.99 or $13.49, one of them too. Either way, completely affordable to me for a six-pack of great-tasting, world-class beer. Uh, 93, I think, is a great score. It's A-level beer. Seek it out, guys. We'll see you again in another beer review. Cheers.